was a dramatic start, but the best of round 18 is still to come. Are we about to see the grand final preview? The Hawks Swans clash headlines our agenda tonight. Some big inclusions for both sides as Buddy gets ready to take on his old side at the G. There's plenty of other big news ahead of the other crucial clash as the West Coast Eagles take on Richmond on Friday night footy. And of course, later on, the Crows will do battle with the Magpies on Sunday. Cam and Baz will be here. And Carmichael Hunt is on the way out of AFL. So was the experiment a success or failure? We'll discuss. Welcome to the Thursday night edition of AFL 360, footy from all angles, and we can't wait for the weekend, Robbo. Welcome. We can't. I just I know you've been on the show before on a Thursday night. Thursday night's our fun night. It is. I know, so... Do you lift. not think I can have fun on a... No, no, no. You were pretty serious on Tuesday night. Last night you were pretty good, but Thursday night's fun okay. night because we've just got the football around the corner. Well, on that... What are you looking forward to? Oh, I'm looking forward to Buddy. I'm looking forward to the whole lot. So I just thought I'd go Buddy because I could pick Buddy every week. I could watch these highlights every day if I had to sit at this desk. This is just going to be a magnificent game of football, where we hope it to be. We've got the two best teams, or two of the best teams going up against each other. It's at the G, it's not at the SCG. I know Hawthorne think they're a very, very big chance. I know a lot of other people saying they won't get near Hawthorne. But have a look at the highlights of this man. Bit of news about this guy tonight. How fortuitous was that, Hutto, me choosing? You called that goal. You didn't think it was going through for a oh, goal, did you? I don't think you? anyone did initially. You said, oh, and Franklin's got it. He's a 70 out and he's kicking it. And then your voice got all excited. It was good. Well, you talked about a little bit of news surrounding Buddy. And that is the reports tonight that uh, he and Liam Pickering, the no, manager, split. have split. So we haven't confirmed that yet. But no, it's been reported in the Australian yep. tonight. So big story. <laughs> Not in the whole scheme of life, but uh, anything but given to do with Buddy he... Franklin. He's just on mm, a 10-year deal. That's right. The question is, how much money is, does Peggers get paid throughout the 10 years? <laughs> that's I, right. I, do not, I do not know. What are you looking forward to? Well, there's a lot to look forward to. But I'm, I'm heading up to uh, Brisbane on Saturday to do the Q Clash, and I'm looking forward to seeing how the young Gold Coast midfield goes without Gary a second time. We, we, they got beaten on the inside and the outside against the Dogs. So, I mean, they really need to win this game, obviously, you know, in terms of local pride, but more importantly, Importantly, to show that they can make the finals and that they can operate without gas. Do you want to gas. see them in the finals, Hutto? Yes or no? Without gas? Uh, look, it'd be great no, for them. No, not if they can. Do you want them to be? Do you want to see Gold Coast? I do. Yeah, it doesn't really worry me either way. No, oh, not really. I'd be great. It'd be a terrific, yeah, fresh story, but it really doesn't worry me out of all those teams that are, are there or thereabouts. But uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they go uh, without Gary for the second time. They've had time to adjust to yep. it now, so it'll be interesting. But I guess it all pales into insignificance compared to Saturday night's game, and that is between Hawthorne and Sydney. And as I mentioned at the top, these could be the best two teams in it. It might be a look ahead to that last day in September. Sydney's absolute best is as good as anything anyone's ever seen. With the talent they've got, it's pretty incredible that how good they could be. Every single player that plays in this competition likes to play in the big game. It's one versus three. There's a lot riding on the game. And they got us up there, so uh, we'll be looking to get one back. I think every side that comes up against Sydney know what they're in for. Um, so you really got to bring... Which is, what? Which, is which, what? which is hard, contested football. You know, that relentless sort of style that they've played over the years. And you've really got to prepare yourself for that. It's exciting. It's a really good challenge for us. You, you really want to see how you go against the top sides in the competition. And Mash, just especially in the first quarter, they, locked, you yeah, know, they, did. they really started the game well. And that'll be something that we'll have to concentrate on coming into this game. Oh, what a game it should be. And plenty of interest in the teams coming into tonight's game, Robbo, too, given that the injuries that have uh, certainly hit Hawthorne, but also Sydney over the time. And uh, the good yeah. news is that uh, the Hawks have got some stars back. Oh, they've got some real stars. I reckon their most important end there is Gibson Hill and Woodward. I'm all under Woodward. He's had a couple of knee reconstructions. So <laughs> good luck. You had play in Sydney, so it should be pretty easy for you. But Gibson and Hill coming in, I think Hill's the more important player. Gibson's a gun. We know that. You know, I think he has been. He's more, so you're saying he's more important than Gibson to come in and yeah, play on Buddy? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. No, um, <laughs> no to, to, to Hawthorne, if they are going to win, OK, yep. I think Hill has to be damaging offensive. So when they get the ball, they've got to, they've got to be able to, to, to make 
the Swans pay. Gibson um, on Buddy. I mean, who can stop Buddy? Gibson will give it his best. Hill can be really, really damaging yep. in the midfield. Oh. So, and Spanger's out with an ankle. Which uh, is probably not ideal for them. Um, it's oh, I know he would have been playing for sure. Well, it means Shalmaker is going to have to play on Tippett, you'd think. Gibson uh, back for that, his first game since round eight. Alex Woodward makes his debut. This is a great story. This is a kid who was picked up at pick 53 from the Sandy Dragons. He was their captain. He's done two knee Ricos yeah. since then, hasn't played a game. He gets his chance to debut against the Sydney Spawns in one of the biggest games of the season. So let's have a look at the Sydney changes now. And uh, the Sydney Spawns have recalled Kurt Tippett. So he's back. Still uh, no Hanabry, no Shaw. And Brandon and Jack misses in out. Tip it out. It's intimidating, Brandon. isn't it? It is just saying it. Well, it's great. It's great for us viewers, uh, footy fans, the footy lovers, to go to a game and watch a game on TV or go to the game and say, hey, Sydney are almost at full nick. You know, they need Hanabry, of course. He's got to go back in. There's another player. Sure. And Reece Shaw. But yep. uh, what, 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 a, what a challenge it is for, for Hawthorne. It's not too often we say that Hawthorne, the underdog's going into a game of football. No, it's not. There's the streak, right? by the way, of the Swans heading for 13 in a row. Yeah, they've taken care of everyone, they haven't they? <laughs> and it's much. been, you know, as Bob Murphy said, it's easy for us fans to to talk about Swans and say how good they are. That 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 quote by Robert Murphy at mm, the start of the big, program there to say, Sydney's best is the best of anyone ever. No, it's a big call. Ever. It's not ever because we've we've all seen some absolutely magical football teams go through our own lives. But what? From, a, from an opposition player, he's comparing it to what he's seen in recent times and they are a formidable team, according to... Well, there to is two, two schools of thought out there at the moment, isn't there? There's the, there's the ones that think Sydney are that much better than everybody yep. else. And then there's others and other people at other teams who think, no, we, we Well, can they get can't it. think that. No, and, they can't. You, and you know, you've been around long enough and you could call two grand finals straight away. Two, oh, wait, <laughs> right? Yep. And the other one when Geelong won, yep. lost when they should have won. Yep. That was two, oh, wait. Yeah, two, oh, eight. And then it was the other one. Well, uh, Sydney beating Hawthorne was yes, another one. Yes, another one. So don't say, you can't say anymore that this team is so far better than anyone else because this game is so great that we have upsets all the time and no one's over the line. We're at round 17, mate. Anything could happen. They are looking great, though, and Hawks have got a lot of resolve. I cannot wait for this game. No, it's going to be sensational. There is a lot of stake, particularly for the Hawks, in terms of what they need to achieve. It's also the 200th game for Jared Ruffhead and head of Saturday Night Footy here on Fox. He sat down with Ben Dixon and talked about the milestone and the significance of that given the game. To be playing 200, I mean, it's it's a it's a great milestone, but you know, because we're playing for top spot, you kind of put it in the back burner a little bit. I mean, um, you know, we found out the hard way a couple of weeks ago when you you know you're a game outside or you're you're just within striking distance of the top four. So if we can make sure we get the points on the weekend, then we're you know we're top two and guaranteed a, a home final in that first week. So more of that chat on Saturday Night Live here on Fox Footy in the lead-up to that big game. But uh, in just this little sidelight, uh, Jared Healy, uh, blogging this afternoon, uh, Robbo, yeah, has sorry. talked about uh, what Melbourne should do in terms of their next coach. And uh, on the news.com.au website this afternoon, Jared has a regular blog, and he said they should look for Alistair Clarkson in the hunt for Paul Roo's successor. He'd be out of uh, contract in a couple of years, and uh, which would be just at the time when Roosie, if he takes that third year would be finished. So there's the quote. Uh, I think it's a great idea. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think it's terrific. I mean... <laughs> Does it leave it too much up in the air, though, given what Melbourne have but said? It's already up in the air. Rizzi talking to us on Monday night has left it up in the air. He talked about, you know, Lingy's probably not ready for the job. They haven't got a successor. Hmm. So they're going to have to just an appoint a coach, aren't they? So they, they got this, there comes a time, right, there comes a time where lowly teams and teams that have been down for a while, they've actually got to make a big statement. Melbourne's already made a big statement. We're going after you, Paul Roos. So they already know it. it's not... It's not foreign, it's not impossible to, to achieve something that people don't think. Why wouldn't they go after Alistair Clarkson? Why wouldn't they? If Ross Lyon's out of contract, make a play for Ross Lyon. The club has got to, all clubs have got to go. Carlton did it with Mick Malthouse. It hasn't quite worked this year. But you've got to be bold. 
You know, I've already written, go after Mark Thompson, Melbourne. Hmm. If Clarkson's available, go after it. I think it's great thinking. Oh, I agree. By, by I just, Jared Healy. They're just married to the process, it seems, so that might be the thing. I but reckon that marriage, you know that 50% of marriages start... end in divorce? <laughs> <laughs> you know that, don't you? That's why you haven't gone I would after think, it. I would, think, <laughs> I would think that that marriage between Ruse and a successor... And the process. I think Ruse is staying out later. I don't, I don't know if he wants to go home at the moment right. on, that, on that front. OK, well, we'll watch that one, of course. But let's uh, check now of the team changes. Big game Sunday. It's almost as big as Saturday night because the ramifications for the loser of this game are huge. And for the winner, and uh, as we check the Chemist Warehouse uh, changes, look at those players, first of all, going out for Collingwood. We've known about them, uh, certainly Swan well, did you and know about? Did you know about Ball? But look, well, no, Luke Ball, for the third time this year, is out. He's had a calf, which is he's, on two separate occasions has missed individual games. He's been the sub twice, and now he's got a back. It was the topic of King and McClure last night about whether he should go on or not. I mean, he's just getting a lot of injuries, Luke Ball, mm. which is going to cloud his jump. But so, uh, he's, um, he's thinking, look at the end zone. Mm. Ben Reid back. Keith, who they clearly needed structurally to get back into the team. Elliot also returns. And Kyle Martin, who we talked about last night, promoted on the rookie off the uh, rookie list. As we have a look at the Adelaide changes and Rutten and Poor Pleasure, both omitted. So they continue to go down the youth pass. Uh, McKay comes into the team. Uh, along with Thompson Young, Greg. Greg. Yeah. Uh, who do you think is going to win this? Look, I'm going to go for Collingwood, but Collingwood have got 13 players under 50 games in their squad. Adelaide have still got 10. I just think Adelaide's poor record at the MCG makes it really hard to pick them. They haven't shown that they can play at the MCG. I know they came close to beating Hawthorne in a big final there a couple of years mm. ago, but I think they've only won one out of the last 12 appearances at the MCG. Mm. So I know, look, you don't go just on that. If you, if you look no, at, it's, just, if, it's just a tip. I just want to know what you're thinking. If you, you look at thinking. their talent, you know, I mean, what, it's a great midfield battle, isn't it? Oh, it is. It is. We asked Buckley last night about Reid, and he's not going to tell us, but they, they, they can't bring a guy in after 17 weeks and say, we want you to play on Tex Walker. That ain't going to happen. He's, he's not ready for that. Now, they might so you say, reckon he'll go forward? Oh, he's got to go forward. Mm. I, 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 think he, I think he has to. He just absolutely has to. I think at the start of the year, we were all thinking that Brendan Reid was going to play beside Travis Cloak all year. Now, they've been, they haven't had him. Mm. You know, and, I, and when Buckley was talking last night about, you know, we've had some injuries and stuff. Of all the players, he wanted and we wanted to see was Ben Reid beside Travis Cloak. Mm. I just can't see him playing back. The game's too hard to play, mate, after 17 rounds to come in and, and play a, a key tall defence. Yeah, it is. They've got some big blokes down there, so it's going to be very interesting. We'll talk more to Moons and to Baz about that later on. Friday night footy. Well, what to think about West Coast and Richmond? Probably the two most disappointing teams of the year, really, uh, subject to expectations. So it's been a tough debut season for Adam Simpson, but he still thinks there's plenty they can get out of the year. Regardless of their wins and losses, their numbers are really high in everything from contested ball, time of possession, clearances, scores from stoppages, all the things that made them such a good good team last year at their back. So uh, they're in a really good space. They, they did a number on us last year over here, so it's going to be a difficult game. Uh, this year is probably just... It's just part of life, and you know, it is, it is the beginning of something new with me. Um, but... It's, uh, it's sort of that happens every year. Well, the Tigers are in good form, but let's have a look at the changes first from the West Coast Eagles. What have the Eagles got going for them at the moment? Well, they've got Dean Cox uh, announcing his retirement. It worked for St Kilda, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking a bit, a bit overall. Not, I don't look at the Eagles and, and get excited. I, you know, Nick Nat's, Nick Nat's the person I want to see dominate. And he hasn't. He's a couple of games. Mm. I don't get excited about the West Coast Eagles. And, and, and I love footy, Haddo. And you know I love footy. But when I watch the West Coast Eagles play, I'll be honest, I'm not entertained. I don't think, wow. I, I actually get really critical. When Jack Darling does something, I say, where's that been? Where has that been? You know, Josh Kennedy. And I look at Matthew Prittis. And you know, I say, Matthew Prittis, you're going to win another best and fairest. And you are a champ. Because you never give up. And I just look at the Eagles and I think, I don't know where they're coming, I don't know where they're going. I say that often, but they're just treading water. I'm disappointed, as you said, in mm. their season. I think people are expecting their midfield more of uh, uh, they, they got it. Do they trade in? Do they trade out? Oh, it's huge. At least, at least the Tigers, who have had their heads head kicked in all year, Hado, at least they've won the last three mm. and they're starting to play a brand of footy. Now, people can be really critical and say, well, where's that been? Why, why are the pressure's off? Let's perform it. I'd rather see what the Tigers are doing than what the West Coast are doing at the moment. Yep. No, it's a fair call. All right, well, uh, 
Also on Saturday afternoon, uh, Dane Zorko and the Brisbane Lions will have uh, a clash. Do you, you want to direct me, do you? Well, you know, <laughs> the light, where the light is. That one over there. They've got a clash against uh, the Gold Coast Suns. And uh, the Lions, even though, of course, they are neighbours, are doing no favours for the Suns. In fact, they'd like to upset them in the lead-up to September. If we're not playing finals, we definitely don't, don't want the Gold Coast playing finals. Um, it'd be great for Queensland football, but um, we want to be the dominant side in Queensland. There's no doubt about that. A Q clash is a, it's, it's what we want to play for up here. Definitely, we want the, to be the number one team in the state. And at the moment, Gold Coast are. And we want to uh, make sure we can level, the, level it off this week with a, a one-all draw for the season, which will, I think, give us a lot of confidence going not only to next year, but uh, just to finish the season off really well. Who are you picking? Oh, I'm going for the Gold Coast. They have to win. They have to win this. So they want to play finals. We talked about that earlier. I think they'll have too much run for them. They certainly did last time. Rockcliffe is back. Which Huge. Is, he's obviously their, their prime midfielder. They lose Golby to injury. And disappointed to see Paparone omitted at this time of the year. He might be a bit tired, mate. He's, only, he's still only 18, I think, Paparone. He's the youngest player in the comp last year, playing. All right, well, he's a year older now. <laughs> Gold Coast. Makes him 18. He was 17 last year. Makes him 18 this year. <laughs> Russell and Cameron in. Is Murphy, it? Colin Dajney, uh, Colin Dajney out injured. That's disappointing for them. That's for sure. Disappointing for him. He's a, he'd be the. I reckon he'd be top three. For rising star. In the rising star, off the top of my head. Who else? Uh, I if I was. Pontempelli. I would. The best young player that I've seen this year is Pontempelli. Mm -hmm. Now, one year, Reese Palmer won, and and Cyril come second, I think. Um, and people were arguing Cyril's going to be a better player. Yeah. But did they have a better year? Same. And Pontempelli's played ten games. Now others have played twenty games. Yeah. They're going yeah. to end up playing twenty games. Ace Langdon, those sort of guys. Ace a gun. Ace is a gun as well. But Pontempelli, he's the one I think. Yeah. What are you going to ask me? Well, just before we we'll get into Carmichael Hunt in a moment, but Greg Swan, uh, it appears, has been uh, named, yeah. is, is going to be named as the CEO of uh, the Brisbane Lions. Do you, do you understanding was that Richard Griffiths was in, in for it as well? He was, yeah. He was a long-time administrator both in Melbourne and in Queensland and now with the Suns, so he, uh, now with the uh, the Giants. So he came second, but Greg Swan he's brings... He's a good football man, Richard, and he's, he's been, looks like, it looks like he's been beaten out by... Um, by Greg Swan. But that's not a surprise. I mean, Greg Swan has been linked to Brisbane for, jeez, four weeks now. Probably even longer, even longer. So if he's gone up there, there's one thing that Greg Swan, for Brisbane fans, there's one thing that Greg Swan has done very, very well, that he turns around football clubs off field. He got to Collingwood and did it, and he got to Carlton and did it and wiped out, you know, means and means of debt. Hey, don't underestimate how hard this it's job's going to un Underestimate how hard this job's going to be. Brisbane, oh, oh, Brisbane no, are the team that have got the most issues. Wayne Bennett now goes there as the Broncos coach. He's going to get so much media for the, for the Broncos. Yeah, he will. The Good media point. attention is going to be difficult, even more difficult. Their crowds are struggling, so they've got a massive job. Well, Carmichael Hunt, it looks like this experiment is over. The Australian reporting, which I think is to no great surprise that he will be on the move. You're going to, going to go to Rugby Union, according to this report, 600,000 K to the uh, the Queensland Reds. Uh, and so, despite uh, yeah, some, making some real inroads in his early time at the, the Gold Coast Suns and obviously bringing some of that attention that I talked about that's so difficult to get in Queensland and the northern states. Well, they, looks like it's over. Yeah, it is over. And they ran out of... Um, Carmichael Hunt's value ran out the day that Gary Ablett arrived. If we're going to talk about superstars putting your club on the map, Gary Ablett did it. I... I think Carmichael Hunt's a terrific person. I think he, he did his job in that first year when Absolutely. he signed up and put interest in And played in it. some good footy. I will never forget that goal he kicked yeah. after the siren. I you know in the worst, what did you call it? The worst 28 seconds in the history of footy. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and Hunt ended up with the ball. That was a magical moment for, for Gold Coast. Um, but he's gone. Well done. Go back and play the sport that you were absolutely brilliant at. And, and uh, I, I mean, I reckon all of Australia now will f sort of follow in a way. Mm, well, he's played Hunt, everything. Hunt's he's future. done everything now. He's done union and league and AFL. All right. Uh, let's chat about James Frawley. I, I want to know, Robbo, your thoughts after 24 hours reflecting on the chat we had with Nathan Buckley last night and his response to your James Frawley question. Are you guys going after James Frawley? And if yes, has, Carl, has, has Collingwood come to an agreement with James Frawley? Uh, no, it's not an appropriate discussion point right would you, now. Would you be interested in James Frawley? No, we'd look at any player that we thought was going to better our list. Yeah, don't worry about the second answer. It was the first answer. What do you reckon? No, I, I haven't confirmed this. And this is not news. This is opinion. I have been told... Right. I have been told 
that Frawley has committed to going to Collingwood. Now I don't know if that's true. So when we had Bucks in the show on the show last night, I hadn't I hadn't written it, so I thought I'd ask him. Mm. And that's the response we got was the long pause and said this is not an appropriate forum. It to was discuss. an odd response, wasn't it? Um, I think it was. Well, come on, I hijacked him a bit. No, I know, but it was still but a long response. I'm, I know, then, you know, I'm not going to tell everyone what I'm going to ask him no. before I ask no. him. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, well, I have thought about it. Mm. I thought about it. Last, I actually thought about it when before. he answered. Yeah, yeah. I'm well, only going to say you're right. You've got him, or you've signed him, or you're going after him. There's no doubt Collingwood are into James Frawley. There's a dog eat dog business, mate. They've got to improve their list. How many free agents are out there? who can immediately come in and fill your list right now. Most of them are signed. Clearly, 24 hours after the event, Hutto, you thought to yourself, what about mm. Buckley's answer? Well, I still think I still think there's a big chance that he'll stay with you Melbourne. May. I'm favouring, you may. favouring that at the oh, moment. Yeah. I'm not favouring that at all. OK. I don't care. Do I care if he stays or goes? I, uh, no, I don't. I hope he stays because I like one club players. But if he thinks he can be better off at another club, well, good luck. Mm. And if you do yep. go there, the world will be watching. And if you play really well, everyone will applaud you and say, well done, James Foley. You're not a bad fit at Collingwood, let's be honest. Though. Another defender would be pretty handy. But whether he's Very. in their mix or not, we'll have to wait and see. All right, the other story that uh, well keeps on giving, I guess, is James Hurd and Jeff Kennett. Uh, to no one's real surprise, uh, has not minced his words again this morning, giving his view. I sadly would apply the same sort of level of governance to James Heard that I have been suggesting to Stephen Trigg. And I don't understand why Paul Little has not tried to establish a new standard there for everyone at Essendon. So in other words, not, not him, James Heard, not to come back and coach? Ever. 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 Uh, ever. So that's the, that's the extreme view on one side, isn't it? Yeah, but as we spoke about with Stephen Trigg last night, that's fine. People mm. can have their opinions. Jeff was really strong on, on, on Stephen Trigg in, uh, in, in the Herald Sun. Um, other people aren't as strong. Um, I reckon we'll find out tomorrow yeah. what James Hurd's going to be doing when he comes back. Um, I have no idea. I'll be honest. I have no idea what, he, what, what he'll be doing. He'll be he'll be back in to the bosom of the club. There's no doubt about that. Match day, as I said last night, Hutto. If Essendon wants him back, they should disregard everyone else and say he's back with us. He's one of our champs. He's staying on. Mm -hmm. hey, I've never asked you your opinion. What is your? Do you think Hurd should coach? I think we have to wait and see what happens with the court. And that's, that's still to play out, obviously, in the next few weeks. And uh, that will give us more clarity. I think we'll, he'll hear something, as you said, I think we'll hear something tomorrow morning. And my gut feel is he probably won't have a, a, a match day role, but we'll wait and see. All right, well, uh, I'm here because Jared's not, Robbo. I know. And you know where he is? He's in... He's in Glasgow. Glasgow. Is he coming on the show? Commonwealth Games. He's on the line now. Oh, is he? Oh, Jared! thank God! <laughs> where have you Hello, been, Hello. mate? It did feel like the only proportional response to having to wash your dog was to flee the country at the first possible opportunity. He's been rolling in mud. He rolls in mud anyway. But that is going to be an exciting event when you come home, Jared. Yes, it's just if oh, I can find is. a reason to stay away, um, you'd have to think about it. So I was gobsmacked when that all unfolded and um, all the uh, all the people in uh, on Twitter did let me know about it and yeah, there are great expectations for me watching your dog. Have you sent a please explain to Fremantle, Jared? <laughs> the free, I have a tempestuous relationship with Fremantle in the past, but mm. keep trying to tip them and work them out, and that has tipped me right over the edge. Right, oh, no, don't worry about footy. We're only not missing much. Just uh, Hawthorne v Sydney this weekend. Tell us about the Commonwealth Games. Tell us about the opening ceremony. Tell me what you're doing today over there. Have you started calling? I'm sitting full side, yes, we're in the, the start. What are you of wearing? Of Your speedos? <laughs> Very good, yes, you know I would be, because that's the sort of guy I am. Uh, look, it is, it's like every city that hosts a major event like this, regardless of your view or the quality of the, the Commonwealth Games and its place, it, it touches right to the heart of the town. And from the moment I arrived, it's been a, a fantastic atmosphere and so much build up towards last night. Uh, Rod Stewart was on stage, and that's been the uh, the talking point of the morning. Um, and uh, the uh, the Scottish Terriers who led all the teams out. So I think 
the Glaswegians were particularly proud of the show that they put on, uh, and they're, they're sort of full-voiced and wholehearted in what's going to come in the next uh, 10 or 11 days. Jared, we'll stay in touch, mate. Uh, hope you uh, enjoy it. I'm sure you will over there. It was a good show this morning and plenty of action coming up in the pool. I wonder how James Magnuson's going to go. We'll get you to report on that uh, early next week and stay in touch. I hope you're enjoying yourself, Hutto. That's and important. Jared, you're the host and he's just cut you off. <laughs> he thinks it's his show now. <laughs> that, that's exactly oh, what well, I'm doing. What? <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm doing. I need it. Because there's, there's tension it. in the air from earlier. I don't know week. why I yell, because no. the microphone's just That's here. Right. <laughs> it's because when you think someone's overseas, <laughs> you've got to yell more. See you, Jared. Baz <laughs> and Moons are ready for you, Robbo. They were threatening all sorts of things on Tuesday night, so we'll see if they follow uh -huh. through. He talks the talk, he walks the walk. It's Ablett with the set. And the mark. He's kicked the goal. Here is the magician at work. He shoots towards goal. What more can you say? He's seen a lot of the football. Again, oh, well no. on the handball. No timed way. it brilliantly. Can he no top way. himself? He can't top himself. Countdown well and truly on for Freak Week and Acker and Ablett Senior are through to the semi-finals. So a sensational. Uh, those two going through is no great surprise. I wouldn't have thought Cameron Mooney hello. and Barry Hall are hello. here with us. Robo. Barry, hello, hello Cameron. Hello, Jeez, all those Acker's goals were against Geelong. Absolute crackers. Everyone has a bogey side. Don't they? <laughs> now, last night, Moons, it was uh, Kappa versus Modra. And, uh, Kappa won. Uh, well, let's have a look and see. Oh, can we suspense, please? Bottom please? of the right-hand corner, <laughs> and it's Modra. Modra. You're Modra. kidding me. 55% to 44. So you can vote on foxfooty.com.au. Ablett versus Modra. Acker is one semi, and Dakes and, and Tony Modra will do next week. That can't be right, Robbo. I reckon 40% of those calls would have been Warwick himself. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon people remember... Kappa, too old, can't be bothered ringing. People remember Modra. Yeah, I know. Bit, a bit younger. Modra was a, he was a freak. Mate, Modra was amazing. But Kappa was, he was a he was the man. freak. No, he was. <laughs> he was all he about was a freak. freak. He was. He had more than freakish style of footy. He had he got those shorts on. Yeah, it's his, <laughs> life, his lifestyle, everything about him was freaky. Well, speaking mm. of freaks, Buddy Franklin, uh, boys, uh, he's already played Hawthorne once this year. We know, kicked two goals, seven. But coming back to the G mm. uh, and fronting them again in such a big game, would Buddy be nervous at all? Do you think, or he just loves the big stage and all relish? Look, he does love the big stage. We know that, don't we, Hawley? But yeah, obviously there's going to be a lot of nerves coming up against the outside at home. It's not so much the side, it's probably more the, the reaction that he's going to get from the crowd. Robbo, he's going to, people are saying, you know, should you boo him? Uh, you know, he's, he was a man that gave you nine years, great service, two premierships, common medal, best and fairest. I'll boo the crap out of him. They will <laughs> absolutely <laughs> pillage him. <laughs> <laughs> but I found, I find, and you were booed. Were you ever booed? You were booed. Well, yeah. I was heckled. Worst premiership play we ever had, Mooney. <laughs> no, that was me and Moon. That was me and Bad. <laughs> <laughs> but you were booed. Yeah. Right. The, the greats of the game, I think they soak up the booze. Yeah, I think. actually enjoy it. Yeah, like mm. Kerry was booed. And if, you, if you're getting booed, you're doing something yeah, right. So it's just I thought if I was getting booed, quite a badge. Um, that's quite a good thing. You're actually doing something right. But uh, yeah, the crowd reaction is certainly going to be totally opposite to what it was last well, time it's we played though, Hawthorne, it was, but, Gaz uh, never. No, Gaz didn't get booed when he came down. Geelong. And now I think if if Buddy went to the Giants, I don't think there would be the reaction that we'll probably see Saturday night. It's the fact cool. that he went That's to Sydney point. to 
to another premiership, mm. maybe. Uh, I reckon that annoyed a lot of lot of Hawthorne people. What about his form? I mean, he is people have most people have compared it mm. to his, his be, at least equal with his best form, and in some ways maybe even more damaging. Yeah, I'm with that. I haven't seen him play this well since probably 2008. I think that was his premier year. Uh, I've seen him take more contested marks this season than I have for a long, long time. I think he's, he's marking is uh, enormous. Obviously, the work that he and Tippett are doing uh, during training to work on their contested marking mm. is must be phenomenal yeah, because he's, too, he's marking he? so well at the moment. He's throwing he blokes the, out of the way. He hasn't got the space played at the SCG like other grounds, so you're probably going to have to bring that into your game a little bit, and particularly when he gets a bit older. You know, he's not going to have the movement and the agility that he does uh, probably right now, so to, to work on those sorts of things um, is probably a good move for him at this stage. It's, it's like he's put on like three or four kilos of more muscle, knowing that he still has that ability to run. He's at the top of his game right Absolutely now. Absolutely is. And, 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 and makes, we all thought he was on the It makes a end. fool of everyone who said mm -hmm. he's finished. It just shows, I know it's going to be boring, it shows that you can improve. No matter how old you are. He's still like like 28, isn't he? It's his best contested mark. That's when you come into your best football at 28. 28. So how's this game going to be played? Tippett returns for Sydney. It's going to obviously put a fair bit of stress, particularly with uh, Spanger out for Hawthorne on their defence. Is that where it is, or is it the Swans' ability to win it with a contested start? Uh, look, I think through the middle of the ground, I think they're, they're both sides are pretty evenly matched. So I think maybe Sydney may have the advantage there, but that's a may. Uh, I think that the, the advantage is down in their forward line for Sydney. I mean, Tippett coming back, we know Shaw and is probably going to have to play back and has never had a really good record against well, one Tippett, but more importantly, just against the really big yeah. guys. And their, their defence has never really had a great record against big power marking forwards. So for me, if it's if the rain stays away and it's, it's a half decent night, if they get decent opportunities, I think that's where they're going to probably well, win the game. It's all about that the Swans stop you from scoring and Hawks score more than anyone in the competition. So it's going to be a real chess match and there's, there's really good matchups all over the ground. Kieran Jack on Burgoyne, um, obviously Grundy on Gunston is going to be a really good matchup. Buddy on Gibson, there's really good matchups all over the ground. Bruce is going to be a real interesting one for me. Who goes to him? Will it be Nick Smith? He's a really good lockdown small. Yep. Will it be Rampy? Um, that, that's going to be a really Smith, big matchup for me. He gets he gets Rioli all the time, Smith. So mm -hmm. he's going to go to the next one. Is, is Bruce and Bruce is arguably one of their best players. Yep. He's kicked 42 goals for the I'd year. I'd tag McVeigh. I would tag Jeremy McVeigh. Oh, I would send Langford to McVeigh and say, right, cut this guy's organisation skills out. Because yeah. it's just, they've got to do something. Tag, you can't tag Kennedy? Well, who with? I mean, I would, I would, I would set it to head-to-head, -to -head, mm. Lewis and um, yep. Kennedy. I'd say, don't, just be accountable. I want you to be accountable. And Jordan, while you're at it, try and get the ball yourself. The McVay's a, it's, it's a really good point you bring up. He's just such a smart player in terms of setting them up. Yep. But he, he might get the possessions that other players do, but he only needs 20 to really hurt Yeah, him. I know. And he uses know. every one of them. He's, there's no better player in a competition See, than setting up you the You talk to the though. Sydney boys, you talk to the Sydney boys, and they will tell you Kieran Jack is the man in that midfield. Yeah. He's the one that runs both ways harder than anybody. Right, Probably would. harder in the, in the competition. So, so we'll tag Jack. You know, mm. One of them. I would, Langford's going to go to one of them. Yeah. If it's Jack, if it's McVeigh, I think it's going to have a bearing on the result. So are you of the view that it's Sydney way ahead of everyone else? And then do you think they, they win this one? Uh, look, I think they do win this one on the back of... Look, Tippett coming back in for me is just a huge bonus. With Buddy playing his best footy, mm. Tippett, we know, off, off a break is excellent. And I just can't see their back line. And I've never seen their back line match up that well with the really big guys. Bess? Oh, look, I, I think footy can turn around really quickly. It can go from good to bad. We've seen Port Adelaide this season. We've seen this week end of football just gone, how things can turn pretty quick. So, um, look, they're, they're looking really good at the moment, but um, mm. you know, we've still got a long way to go. Exactly. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. All right, uh, let's move on to uh, Jake Carlisle then, because uh, the way he has... Did anybody see this coming? <laughs> well, Bomber did. Bomber. I told you Bomber. footy can turn quick. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, awesome, guys both, you guys are you know, both gun forward, so is it just, has he just taken this amount of time to work? was a six-shooter. He was the big double barrel over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Has it just taken him... I'll ask him then. Has it, <laughs> it just <laughs> taken him... Best player ever. The amount of time, <laughs> this amount of time to work out how to do it? Oh, look, it, 
a lot of faith from his coach. I reckon he's got to thank his coach for, for putting so much faith into him to just give him some time to find his feet. And look, if um, it could have been really bad for him. He could have went back to reserve grade and he could have just dropped mm -hmm. his bundle altogether. So a great turnaround for him. But just look, he's obviously a confidence player. And, and once his confidence is up, he does this sort of stuff. He he's marks 22. the ball he's at 22. the highest point. Baz, 22. Yep. What were you doing at 22? Seriously, where was um, your footy? I was very, very inconsistent. Yet, where at St Kilda still? At St Kilda, yeah, very inconsistent. Um, I'd play 10 good minutes at a time. I'd go missing for another 40. So um, for him to do this at, at this young age um, and contested marking, the last two weeks has been outstanding from him. So it uh, looks a real feather in his cap and it's, it shows a bit of character from him. So good on him. Where were you at 22, Moose? Oh, I was all over, probably in the pub. No. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Look, Matty Egan said at the start here, because I asked him, you know, why are you playing him down there? He said he's he's elite runner and we know how amazing his hands are and that's why they kept persisting with him. And I love what Bomber said last week, I think it was, when he said, we weren't looking at him for this year. This, this guy we're trying to play there for the next six mm -hmm. years, with him and Danaher there for the next six, eight, ten years. That's an amazing cup couple of key forwards yep. in, your, in your forward line. While we're on big forwards, I want to ask you about and get both your opinions on the GWS. Do they keep their gun three forwards, young Absolutely. high draft picks, or do they prepare to trade? They lost Tim Moore for another 12 months. Their defence obviously needs some help. They've had a long run with some you know, tough injuries this year. But do they keep them all? Do they, they stick with, with Boyd, Patton and Cameron, or do they are they prepared to see what's on offer? No, look, I think if you... Look, they've got so many midfielders through their group, and every team... Most a lot of other teams would be dying for fewer of their midfield. I think that's if you're going to go for a key defender, that's who you try and use as bait. You don't use these three guys. These three could be amazing. Uh, I think with those three and a ruckman, look, one of them has to play a makeshift ruck role. Well, both Patton and Boyd can play yeah, that exactly. role. Exactly. So, so. I, look, I'm a, I'm a big fan of having the three key forwards in your in your forward line. You play a bit of a triangle system. Uh, when one of them being able to go into the ruck. Um, you, I love the fact that you have big three marking forwards, Robbo. Well, we're just talking about Jake Carlisle being 22. These guys are younger than that. Mm -hmm. So let's put them in the one forward line in five years' time and say, yeah. come on, everyone, find a defence exactly. to play a game. Do you know how we have revolutionised the game? We have small forwards, we have meds, medium sized so Hawthorne, a lot of meds, medium sized forwards. They're going to, like, they might change the game and force everyone to go with three well, forwards. They can all run, and the same as the, the Suns boys. I mean, they've got three key forwards who are now coming into their own. They've yep. all played around the 50 game mark. You're starting to see their dominance. These guys next year and the year after, it's going to be bloody scary. And I think you're right, and I think they will. I don't think they'll yeah. trade. So let's let's get back to the game. So Collingwood and Adelaide. Uh, we know Ben Reid is coming back in the team. Hawley, we've had this discussion a fair bit already about whether he starts forward or back. Which, which are you favouring? Oh, look, I, I, I like him back. Um, I think they need to play him back at, at this stage. And they're coming up against a pretty formidable forward line. Um, you know, the Adelaide Crows are, are going pretty well up there, so you've got to play him where you need him, and I think they need him down back more than up forward at this stage. We had this discussion with Nathan Buckley last night, and he yeah. said I was a close talker. Right. <laughs> He's space invader. No, just getting a bit close to it. Do you, you think Reid can start key back guys missing 17 weeks of football and getting a job? on a Tex Walker. Wouldn't go to There's Walker. There's the ins and outs. I think, I think Frost and Keefe will get right, eh? uh, Walker and Jenkins. So where does, where does Ben well, Reed probably go? have to go to Pods. I think it's probably easier for Pods him... Pods is going up the ground a lot now. Yeah, but it's easier for him, I think, to play as a defender where you can your man takes you to the ball and trying to be a key forward when you've been out for that long to try and find the ball yourself. Good, that's good. I thought the other yeah, way. I thought the, the other way. Mm. Get led to the ball. Yeah, you'd led to the ball a bit. Get you into the game. Mm. I mean, if he played 150 games as a key forward, so he'd play him as a forward. But he's still a pretty relatively young person as a forward. played five games yeah, yeah, so last year. Get him down back, let him get his confidence, swing him forward late in the game or late in the quarter, whatever it might be. Let him get his confidence that way. What a surprise, two key forwards saying it's easier to play in defence. Well, it is easier then. Oh, oh, I merely made it. Like, I merely made it. Nice. Moons, we're both heading up north to see Brisbane play against the Gold Coast. Uh, what are you, how do you read this one? Look, I like Brisbane up there at the Gabba. I've yeah. seen, them, seen them a few times, and I just think they lift uh, a huge cog when they're playing at home. Uh, we know the Suns have got an amazing forward line, I spoke about before, and their talent should win them, and they've got a final spot on berth. But I just think Brisbane up there, I think Zorko, Rockcliffe's elite player, we spoke about that in league teams. His numbers are, are amazing. He's back in. Uh, like I said, I love watching Zorka up there. He's a, he's a barometer 
up there at the Gabba, and I think he uh, might get them over the line. You know, I, th I think these are the games they need to win the Gold Coast Suns. They want to be a finals contender. They need to beat the Brisbane Lions up there in the Q Clash. And look, um, I know it's going to be a lot spoken about. If they drop this one again, mm -hmm. they can't win without Gary, but they just need to get this monkey off their back, win a game, and start to move on and start to look forward to some finals. And Russell's a really big in for me. I'd, I'd rate him as a player. Is, is, is Gaza just a, a big security blanket for these young kids? We'll find out, Moods. Won't we? Everyone retires and moves on at some stage in life, no, and it's amazing other players come through mm. and pick up the slack. And that's what we're going to hopefully see from Gold Coast's point of view. There's the history, the there's the history of the, uh, the Q Clash, and certainly earlier this They've year. They've talked they, about they it. They talked it up too. So it's, it's a good. little bit fiery. It's, it's good. great. Oh, you know, but Do you think the players cool. get told to do that? Something in the water up there. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. What's in the water? What's uh, in the water? Something. <laughs> 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 now, Moons, you're uh, you're up, upset that one of our fellow members is following. No, team. no, I'm really wrapped at Kingy's day. Oh, you're yeah, so no, no, I'm wrapped. It's, it's, it's catching. Yeah, it is. It's catching. And this is good from Kingy. We'll just show it here. This is on Sunday night. There he goes. Just look around. There he goes. Bang. Hey. There it is. He thought about it. He was calculated. Yeah. No, oh, he, there's one he, from Jack Zubel. He's been a bum tapper from way back, Kingy. Yeah. 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 Even when he was playing. He's got yeah. bum tapper. Massive. Yeah. Bum tapper. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's got bum tapper. But. It's catching on. Now here's my uppercut. Yes. Hang on, I, I like seeing it first. Put it up. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> God, that would hurt, wouldn't it? Did you really launch oh, it? Oh, he <laughs> launches into it. Now, right. the uppercut goes to one of the, one of the full forward greats, Matty Lloyd. What's he done? Well, footy classified. Have a look. Is that, is that, that's what it's called. Is it still going on that show? Yeah, that's what. Yeah, yeah it's okay. Still, what happened on talking that? footy? Let, let's, have, well. let's have a look at what upset you, mate. What happened? Our Lord, oh, David King's antics with current players is not on. Good call, right. back call. A good call, affectionate call. I thought David King. Let's take a look at Kingy on the weekend with Adam Cooney. I thought the hand on the back was a bit much, but look, he's eyeballed him and then a bump tap. Oh. He has gone to a new <laughs> level there, King. What's this? Again, bump tap. <laughs> And then the oh. fart joke at the end. Give yourself an uppercut, Lordy, because that is our segment. You get off it, mate. This is our bum tapping. <laughs> <laughs> Look what he's taking. The Can't bum believe tap. he's trying to get funny, funny, funniness out of bum taps. He's kidding you know himself. With huh? you know with Lordy? Well, I've met him once with horse. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you take it there. <laughs> <laughs> boys, well done. We'll yeah, see you. Well done, funny. Yeah. You said they aren't funny. We'll see you again they next week. Funny. The weekend They're forecast is coming up. Nathan Thompson, a former hawk and a former kangaroo, will join us as he helps promote. Beyond Blue with our weekend for us. The best teams in it, Sydney and Hawthorne. And what a clash it's going to be Saturday night at the G. It's way more than just Buddy against his old team. It's first versus third, and it's four vital points. And that's not all that's up for grabs on Saturday night. It is also the Beyond Blue Cup as Hawthorne take on Sydney. And one of the ambassadors of Beyond Blue is Nathan Thompson, former champ for the Hawks and the Roos. Welcome, Tomo. Yeah, thanks, Otto. Great to, uh, great to be here. You're welcome. I'm normally sitting on the couch. Uh, uh, watching you guys this time of night, so good to be a part oh, of it. Oh, welcome, mate. How important is how important is this this week for Beyond Blue and, and, and people associated with it? Yeah, Robert. Oh, it's amazing. The footy is very important for both clubs, no doubt about that. But the actual raising uh, of awareness for the silent killer that is depression and mental illness is super important. Uh, for too long, the um, issue of depression had been uh, probably squashed, and uh, people wouldn't talk about it. Too ashamed and guilty and really felt uncomfortable uh, speaking about their experiences and sharing that and actually you know wanting to get better and uh, being uh, on the front foot and proactive to do so and things like this just put it in the forefront of everyone's minds and get that discussion going they, they give it an opportunity to get rid of that stigma that goes with this illness. Do you think the organisation such as Beyond Blue helps a guy like for example it's another code Darius Boyd coming out this week and in suffering depression um, yep. So do you think organisations beyond blue encourage and, and say, guys, if you're in trouble, put your hand up? 
Oh, and that's what this and girls. And that, oh, yeah, well, that's what this conversation's all about. It, it really is. And uh, I suppose, from my point of view, having experienced it mm. while I was uh, playing elite sport and, and playing football, and being one of the first to, to speak about it too. Yeah, and and to be honest, remembering back, and uh, you know, Mitch Clark is the latest one from a mm. from a football point of view, and and seeing Mitch um, speaking, I think it was might have been on the Footy Show with mm. um, or something like that, and seeing him speak actually made me feel sick because I remembered how I felt that time where I actually went to the press conference to talk about it and, and the way it made me feel and uh, and seeing him talking about it then just took me right back to that feeling and uh, you know I really felt for him but w what I f found from that was great was that he was a guy that had actually put his hand up and said you know what I am unwell at the moment I need to get my health right. Mm. Footy's not that important. The most important thing is that I actually work out what's going on here and I do what it takes to actually get my health right before getting back out onto the footy Have field. Have you spoken and that, to, and to Mitch? I actually haven't. I, I don't know Mitch. Um, I've been pretty open, I think, in the um, in all sort of forms of media and when talking to people to say, oh, I'm an open book. So if anyone like Mitch or guys that have experience or do find themselves in a situation where they get to the stage where they're ready to talk or they want to talk to someone who has been in a similar sa situation like elite sport and would feel like having a chat to me with a coffee, I'd be an open, I'd be an open door. They can, they can certainly say, Hello, but uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go banging on the door to say, yep. "Here I am." You know, um, I want to come and chat. Uh, to it's great it's to hear. To them. It's great to hear all oh, that, Tom. And I've known you for a long time. And every time I'm with you, I'm, I'm on air. I listen to you speak on air. You talk about Beyond Blue. Very rarely does someone ask you, "How are you going?" Because it's an ongoing thing that you, you deal with. How, how, have, how have you? How are you dealing with it, and, and, and what's been the most significant improvement in, in your life? Uh, it's been a journey, Robo. To be honest, it probably you know, I haven't spoken a lot about it or in depth. I've probably. never heard. I've never heard. Just and since that uh, day. yeah, that, to be honest, there's been a few crashes along the way. You know, it's not a, it's not um, you talk about it and then everything's solved, uh, problem solved. You're you're out in the clear. Certainly, there's been some ups and downs along the way. But uh, one of the most profound differences was how much I learned about myself in uh, the reflection that I needed to do to work out and talking to specialists and speaking with my family about what I needed to do to get myself healthy again. Uh, the person I was before when I was unwell and suffering with depression while playing for the Hawks to the person I am now is a completely different person and the journey that's been in between has in a way I, I certainly don't ever want to be back where I was that's for sure mm. but I wouldn't change the way it's been because it's definitely made me a much better person and certainly I think uh, the honesty about uh, my own health and sharing that with people has been just a huge learning experience for me. Oh, it has oh, been inspirational too. and uh, mm. you're here to help us Great listening to you. not just promote the Beyond Blue, Blue Cup but uh, give you us your, your, weekend, head on the line. your weekend, right forecast. weekend forecast. Footy. Footy. Your sure thing. Tomo, you can go first. My sure thing? I think I heard Sean Boy, uh, Burgoyne. You talk. always say that. Uh, Sean I do. Boygoyne. Uh, Boygoyne. Everyone Burgoyne. I think I was uh, hearing him on radio saying that uh, Buddy uh, shouldn't be booed, he should be respected. I think that's garbage and I think it is guaranteed that Buddy will be booed. Well, they rang me today and I said Buddy will be fiercely booed. Fiercely <laughs> booed. <laughs> Tom yeah. has already Cheers. said he's going to be booed. I think it's going to be a great sideshow to the main event it'll on be, Saturday it'll night. It'll be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, you're mixing it did up, Did you get booed when you left Hawthorne? Yeah, bloody oath I did. Yeah, of, course they, of course they booed me. Yeah. Right, right. Well, mine is that the Tigers will win on Friday night and they'll be back on track to finish ninth. They will. Are they really? Imagine if they did. <laughs> Being a bit mischievous there. I... Tom I most at stake. I actually think it's for the Hawks, uh, to be honest. They've got such a tough run home. You throw in Fremantle, you throw in Geelong. Uh, they get uh, the Sydney Swans at the MCG. It's going to be a big mountain to climb for them, but if they can get over the top of this one, I think their top four spot is secure. Um, and missing the top four could be the difference between them having a red-hot go at the flag or not. Robbo? Gold Coast Suns, as you've spoken about, I think twice this show. I look at them and I think, right, what are we going to see? We just spoke about them. What are we going to see? If they win, they are well and truly in the mix because there's a couple of teams around them. If they win, Collingwood are out at the end of this weekend. Mm. It's huge consequences. Yeah, both got... Yeah, well, big, uh, mine's Bucks. Uh, similar scenario where we had him here last night. And I, if they lose, uh, both them and Adelaide got a very similar run home. So whoever wins will be in a great position. I think in the long term, it, it doesn't hurt Bucks that much if they miss the eight. But it'll just make everything he has to do a little bit harder in terms of mm. just making sure that the troops following the, the, the Collingwood faithful are, are right on side. So he'd, he'd want to win. What about the doomsday? 
Come on. Uh, the Doomsday, I was a bit unsure about this one when it came through on the email, but I'm just going back to Hurdy, going back to the Bombers uh, for this one. Cool. I'm just not looking forward to the circus starting up again, to, to be honest. And I don't know that there's actually a win in this for, for the Bombers, unless that he comes back and the perfect scenario, they win some finals. But I just can't see that happening. I think the circus will start up again, and I don't think that's great news for the Bombers. Robbo? Yeah, my Doomsday, which I, was so silly of me, I spoke about it in my most at stake, is Collingwood losing and dropping out of the eight. I jumped the gun a little bit. Just goes to show how important this game is. I don't know why it's on at 4.40 on a Sunday afternoon, but anyway, that's that's life. And it'll be live, live on Fox and we'll love it, Robert. I love it at 4.40 and it's live on Fox. And mine is Sydney wins by eight goals and then they're so far and ahead the best team in the competition. That's It's great. Doomsday that it, for everyone else. Doomsday for everybody else, exactly. Tomo, good stuff. Thanks for coming in Thanks and uh, sharing you, some stuff with us and, uh, and also good luck for the weekend for Beyond Blue. We're going to take a break. Don't forget Friday night footy. The West Coast Eagles and Richmond will do battle live on Fox Footy tomorrow night. I didn't think you two got on. Because of last year, it was, it was awkward, wasn't it? Parmuding, that's actually from Western China. It's, it's, a, it's from our region. A little city of about 9 million people. Sure, they're not hash cookies. <laughs> <laughs> your gloves go very well with your lipstick tonight. <laughs> Moon. <laughs> It'd be worse out what James said. Yeah, I feel like I'm falling out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I'm going down. He sacked everyone except for Juddies. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, yeah. About Goods. to sack myself in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we're not bumped up. No, 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 it's, it's on hold. What about uppercutting? No, we're doing neither. This is, <laughs> this is what there. happens when you take something too far. If you see me play, I run like a 35 year old. Now I'm smaller than you. <laughs> <laughs> there must be a problem with the chair. Yeah, it's a close talker, isn't it? Close talker. <laughs> Am I in your face? <laughs> You're a close talker, mate. <laughs> I thought you were just about to kiss him. <laughs> I'm going to stab you with a blunt knife. <laughs> How tough are those two? What a way, to, not what a way to finish the message, uh, finish the week. That's been our week so far, Robbo. Greg Swan, been confirmed as Brisbane CEO. Mm. So good luck to Brisbane, good, good luck, luck to Swanee. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, thanks for being with us. So thanks for having Thank me you. With you. I think you've been terrific this week. Uh, been a very interesting week and a massive weekend of footy is coming up, of course, uh, with uh, massive games both tomorrow night with uh, West Coast and Richmond and then it doesn't get any bigger than Saturday night. 4.40 Sunday live, Fox. <laughs> it's going to be great. Be great. Encore of league teams to follow, so make sure you tune in for that. Till Monday night, it's good night, Bomb. We'll be with us then.